Uh, she's volunteered over a thousand hours working on these projects. Uh, she particularly enjoys and speaks about herb gardening, which we'll hear about today, as well as houseplants, orchids. I've never been able to keep an orchid alive. My friend tells me put an ice cube in the dirt. That's all they need, but that's never worked out for me. Um, <laughs> as well as uh, I believe um, designed the San Carlos Library Master Garden. That's amazing. So with that said, I will now uh, welcome Pear, first of all, and Michael, great to have you. Um, and uh, turn the floor, and Vicki, and Rosie, thank you, and Grace, and Sandy, thank you for joining us right at the right time, and Susan. Um, I'm going to mute myself so that uh, you guys can have the floor and share your uh, interesting discussion. Thanks. Okay. Well, thank you for inviting us. Um, we're very excited to be here today. And basically a, master gar basically, a master gardener is trained by UC Davis. Um, we're all volunteers. And we're trained for six weeks. Um, by UC Master Gardener experts and all the top people. So they hope we learned something so that we could share with the community. That is our major goal, is to share how to garden, how to take care of your soil, how um, to grow vegetables, fruit trees. So we're basically a teaching um, group. So I hope that explains. And the title Master Gardener doesn't mean we know everything because we sure don't. <laughs> There's a lot to know, but um, a lot of us have kind of uh, veered off into specialties. So um, that's uh, herbs is one of my favorite things and one I've learned a great deal about. So um, I've lived in San Carlos most of my life. And when I was asked to do an herb garden uh, at City Hall, behind City Hall, in the library pocket garden, I was really very thrilled to do something for my city. So um, I don't know if any of you have seen the native garden that's uh, in back of City Hall. The herb garden is in conjunction with that, um, which is in a little pocket garden in, by the library, by the children's library, which I hope uh, someday we'll be able to teach once this epidemic is over and educate people about native plants and herbs. And I really look forward to having the children from the library come out into the garden and taste and feel and smell the herbs and um, make it a real sensory kind of project. So I thought it would be fun to start um, the lecture today with a little tour of the herb garden at City Hall. So Kathy, are you ready? It's good to go. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. Hello, my name is Cindy Morris. I'm a San Mateo, uh, San Francisco. Oh, we lost Sam. Mm. What happened here? I have to restart it. Uh, some a lot of times videos just don't have good sound on Zoom. Well, I can tell you what I'm talking about there while we're waiting. I'm showing you the herb garden. Um, I started a little herb garden by um, in this planter box, which is a good place to start one because herb uh, mint likes to go all over the place. So I have orange mint, um, berries and cream, apple mint, chocolate mint, pineapple mint, spearmint, peppermint in this little bed. Mint really is a wonderful plant. It's great for teas. Uh, it's great with fruit. Um, it's really a wonderful little herb. So how are we doing, Kathy? You know, sometimes I 
come down to this uh, garden to work and I find people sitting in it. Um, they're sitting in those chairs behind uh, there and they have their computer or book or something and it's just relaxing, <laughs> enjoying the, um, the, the herbs. And sometimes they take a little snip at home with them of something, but that's okay. Um, herbs like to be picked. So it seems that we're having some difficulty with the video. Kathy, can you give me a report on the video? Um, yeah, Jeffrey, can you hear me? No, Jeffrey's walking me through restarting this. Okay. Hold on a second. Well, while we're waiting, um, I don't know if anyone has any, why don't you, if you have a question, unmute yourself in this time and ask me um, because we're having a delay. So um, if there's any questions about herbs that you've been you know, dying to know about, ask me right now. When Again, you went question. To, can you hear me? Yes. When you, when you went to- Your computer the, sound, okay. When you took the course at Davis, and you live in San Carlos? Yes. What was the logistics of, of doing that? Did you drive once a week to Davis or how did that no, work? We drove, I drove to San Francisco. The mint garden has. Oh, here we go. <laughs> okay, you good? Okay, well, I'll answer. Orange mint, answer. Uh, strawberry and cream mint, um, peppermint, pineapple mint. It's got as many mints as I could put in here, chocolate mint. Um, mint is really a wonderful herb, and um, as long as you put it in a container, it's a great mint. If you put it in your garden, it could take over the place. So this was a perfect place to put it in its own little container here. Let's go on down and look at the Mediterranean garden. When we were developing the gardens, we, we wanted to make it an educational site. So we thought uh, long and hard about how we could do that. Um, so we decided to make an international garden. We have a Eastern garden, um, which includes India, um, Southwest Asia, China, all of the um, um, Eastern states. Uh, countries and and um, of course Mediterranean garden which is what we use co most commonly and a Latin garden and then a native garden so let's talk about the Mediterranean garden since that's what we use most of the time I put in many different um, oreganos and herbs um, to show that there are different a lot of different varieties that you can pick from I've also put in a little caper plant and I'm hoping like anything that it really, um, you know, takes off. I have a couple different fennels. Um, I, have a, I have a sorrel over here and just a variety of different herbs, uh, some basils. Um, these herbs need six to eight hours of sun a day, a nice hardy soil, and they don't like to be overwatered. Um, they like to be watered and have it drained through. If you can accomplish that, you're doing great. Also, they're great in containers. Uh, herbs have uh, small root systems and they're great in containers, which is really nice. You can put them in a little pot by your back door as long as you have all the growing requirements. So at dinner time, you can go out and snip them and put them in your, your, your food. Um, <clears throat> I also have in the garden um, edible flowers. Uh, right now the marigolds are blooming. I've had um, nasturtiums, borge, calendula. I um, have cosmos here. And they really add a lot of color to the garden and they really are fun to use in your cooking. So make sure you add some to your, um, to your garden. Um, I guess that's about it for for the garden. I'm glad you could come by and I'm glad that um, I hope you'll come down and visit us and enjoy our garden. It's open all the time. This herb garden is behind the library in the pocket gardens and um, 
hope you come down and see us. Thanks for your patience with that video. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. But um, anyway, I think you get the idea. Um, I want to answer, um, I, I can't see his name, but um, down, I would like to answer the question that was asked of me. Um, I'm a San Francisco, San Mateo County Master Gardener. And we had our training in Golden Gate Botanical Garden at the County Fair Center. Um, we drive up there every, we go once a week and we stay all day. And you see um, sends down um, speakers to us. And we had some wonderful speakers, um, just wonderful. Um, we'd leave in the afternoon like, you know, blah, 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 because we learned so much. It was like a whole course in one day, but uh, some of it stuck. So um, that's how we did that. Um, so uh, let's talk herbs. Um, I, well, before that, I'd like to invite you down to the garden. We're there at 930 every Tuesday. And if you have a question about herbs or native plants, um, please stop by and see us. Or otherwise, if you're in the area, just peek in and take a look. Um, okay, so we've grown the herbs and um, we've done a good job and we're taking them into the house and eating them, but we have, there's a lot left on our herb plants that we could do with. So I would like to offer you some suggestions about things you can do with those herbs. Um, one thing is you could craft with herbs. You could make a little hostess um, bouquet, or you could dry the herbs for the winter. Um, I've prepared a arrangement for you to look at. Um, this is an uh, arrangement made of herbs and edible flowers in a pumpkin for the holiday. And I've added peppers and uh, um, uh, some vegetables. I have some lettuce and I have a Brussels sprout. I also have dill. I have um, a fennel flower, parsley, sage, um, some red pepper and an orange pepper. Um, what else do I have in here? Some yarrow. And I think it's quite pretty and festive. Uh, be great on your Thanksgiving table and really easy to do, and it smells great. Um, the other thing that um, is fun to do, and that is to make a little hostess bouquet. I made this little bouquet um, this morning, and it's got uh, some of my Cecil Bruner roses, which are edible, and I've got um, a little sunflower head um, that'll go to seed. I've got a parsley and dill, and some um, um, hummingbird mint in here, flowers. And it's just a real, you know, it's just a real sweet thing to uh, bring. People are very impressed if you grow something and you take the time to cut it and put it in a bouquet and give it to them. And then I tie little ribbons around it. And it's really very welcome with a bottle of wine or something and really easy to do. But my very favorite thing to do is to dry herbs. Um, and I'm going to show you how I dry it. You could dry them in a uh, dehydrator, oven, hanging, or in a basket. This, that's what I like to do. So this is my basket. It's, um, I guess, a bread basket or something that I got at the thrift store. I like this basket because it's got holes all over. So there's plenty of air circulation so that the herbs dry quickly. Um, I want the herbs to dry quickly because I don't want to lose any of the flavor. So what I do is I, I go outside, I cut my herbs in the morning when um, the flavor is the most intense and um, I bring them in, wash them, dry them. And then I take them and I strip the leaves off the stem and put them in my basket. As you can see, there's no stems in here, it's just leaves. So I like to do that because um, sometimes the stems hold water. So I want to get rid of that water so they'll dry quickly. So once they've dried, it'll take a few days, I will take my hand and just run it over the herbs like this. And voila, it smells great. I must say the oregano smells great. This is oregano. Um, 
So what I'll get is um, some herbs that are ready to go in a container. They're perfect size for, um, for eating. So what I'll do is I'll take them and I have my little container here because I want to put them in an airtight container and put them in there. And then I'm going to have these all winter to use. And by the way, oregano is one of the best or is best dried, better than fresh. So here I have all my herbs. Oops, poured them on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll label it and mark it with a date and I'll have fresh oregano all year. You know, sometimes the, the herbs that we have in the store are already a year old before they get there. So they're not very fresh. So it's really a nice thing to do if you grow herbs to dry some. <clears throat> then of course, the other thing you could do is you could, um, you could let your herb plant go to flower if you don't want to use it. If you don't want to dry it or cut it or anything. And it will um, attract many, many beneficial insects. You would be surprised. Insects love herb plants. <clears throat> so that's something else you can do um, with, your, with your plants. Um, so I'm gonna ask Kathy if there's any questions. I'm gonna yes. ask Kathy if there's any questions uh, in the chat box before we go on. Um, yes, Cindy, Lucille wants to know if cosmos flowers are edible. They are. What would you do with them? Put well, them on a What would I do with them? I put them in salad. Um, you could, um, the cosmos are not totally edible. Um, you have to, I wouldn't eat the um, pistons and stamens of a cosmo. I would just eat the petal. Um, so something important to know about um, edible flowers is that you need to know what you're eating. <coughs> you need to know what you're eating before you eat it. Sometimes only part of the flower is edible, uh, not all the flower. Well, thank you. That will mm -hmm. needs a little more research then. Mm -hmm. uh, Phil asks, he can't grow tarragon. Is there any trick to growing tarragon? I grow tarragon. I don't have a problem. Uh, do you have it in full sun, Phil? He's probably muted. Well, he can unmute and talk to me if he wants. Um, yeah, it, I do have it in full sun. I usually get one, um, you know, you buy a pot of tarragon, plant it, and then it dies. I don't know mm -hmm. what I'm doing wrong. And I, I usually keep it in a planter, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like a ceramic planter, so. Does it die in the winter? No, it usually dies in a week. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's not good. No. <laughs> well, there's something that plant doesn't like. Maybe yeah. it's the soil. Could be, could be. Um, what kind of soil are, are you putting it in? Potting soil or, or yeah. just regular soil? Potting soil. Hmm. Well, mine does okay at my house. Um, maybe try a different location. Yeah. Um, and different soil and see what happens. Needs lots of sun. They need lots of sun. Six to eight hours of sun a day. Mm. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Cindy, here's a question about white flies. Uh, Patty says that her garden has white flies. Do you have any advice for these pests? Hmm, white flies. Well, these little insects are really difficult um, because they only last a day or so. They don't live very long. But these little guys lay eggs everywhere. The eggs are the problem. So you could, you know, squirt the plant off with a hose and uh, remove white flies and you could see them flying all over the place. But it's the eggs that are the problem. Um, you could use safer soap or neem oil and try, you know, maybe spray the plant. Uh, <clears throat> my philosophy with uh, things like white fly is just let, let it be and um, it'll, the season will pass that they're you know, prevalent. Okay, well, thank you, Cindy. Um, here's another question. Um, it's more of a statement. And they were saying that, um, noting that all herbs don't need a lot of watering. How often do you water your herbs? 
Yes, herbs do not need a lot of water because they're they're from the Mediterranean, which is very arid. And um, you could water your herbs uh, maybe once or twice a week, and they only need a little bit of water. They don't need to be saturated. Um, they're actually happier. And um, some people believe that if you starve the plant of water, that it will create more volatile oils. Uh, it'll stress the plant and they'll make more oils and have a better taste. Um, I haven't tried that. I like, I just give them water. <laughs> so if, of course, if they're in a container, they'll need more water than in the ground. In the ground, you know, you don't need to water them for, in, you know, you know, whenever you water the, the garden around it. But if it's in a pot, it will need a little more water. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and Judy has a question. Can you dry cilantro the same way as you were demonstrating with the oregano? Absolutely. Um, you sure can. I dry um, uh, parsley, um, cilantro, and um, another thing I like to dry is bay leaves. If you go to someone's house or you have a, you're lucky enough to have a bay tree in your garden, um, a native bay tree, um, I always ask if I could have a branch, a little cutting of it. And I take it home and I dry the leaves. And oh, they're just, they're just so much better than the ones in the store because they're um, bright green for one thing. They're not that gray color. And um, they taste wonderful in stews or soups or whatever you put them in. So <clears throat> I also wanna say something about cilantro while I'm here. Um, cilantro, I'm sure, I don't know of how many of you have grown cilantro, but I'm sure you've had problems growing it with bolting. Um, cilantro is a fall and spring herb. It is not a summer herb. Ironically, the stores sell it in the summer. Um, it's, it, it doesn't like the heat. Uh, cilantro and parsley do not like heat. So if you grow in the midsummer, they're going to bolt and um, you're going to lose the taste of, the, of those flowers. Um, it's also a biannual. So um, it'll grow, set roots the first year and then set flowers the next year or seed. So you can, you'll have the plant for two years. That's it. Anything else, Kathy? No, that's all of the questions that are in the chat box. Maybe someone else, something that they just thought of. Well, um, until someone thinks of something else, let's just talk about edible flowers for a few minutes. Um, I really like using edible flowers in um, salads, um, on, in baking, in mixed drinks. Um, they're just really fun and you know, you could mix uh, edible flowers with uh, cheese, make a cheese ball, or you can put, um, you can get butter and you can mix it up and um, put some edible flowers, maybe some little pansies or something, and chop some chives and put those in, and then uh, put it in the freezer for a half an hour or so, and then slice it, um, and then lay it on the plate for your dinner party. Believe me, your guests will be very impressed. <laughs> and it's really not very hard to do. Um, let's see. Um, so I already mentioned that you should know what you're eating before you eat it, because some parts of the flowers are not edible. So let's talk about a few different types of edible flowers. Edible flowers um, that I'm going to talk about are all edible. The whole thing is edible the ones I talk about today. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is nasturtium. I'm sorry, I don't have a nasturtium plant. This is a nasturtium flower and it's, um, it has like, a, um, like an endive taste or a lettuce taste. And it um, is great in salads, beautiful in salads. The colors are bright and um, they really, they have kind of a watercress taste really fun to use. Some people won't eat them, but still, it looks pretty in your salad. The next one is um, borge. This is a picture of borge. Um, it's a beautiful blue star type flower, and it's kind of got hairy, um, the leaves are hairy. There's no leaves showing here, but they're hairy. I would only eat the flower of this plant. I think it, that would be the tastiest part of this flower. 
Um, <clears throat> this also can be used in um, soups, stews, um, savory dishes. Um, and this plant, as does the nasturtium, reseeds very easily. So if you plant it one year, you'll have it the next year too. Um, the next plant I'd like to talk about is calendula. And I happen to have a couple of calendulas here. I'll put them close so you can see. Um, they're orange and yellow. And um, these are really peppery tasting. And so you'd basically just pick the petals off. Come on, pick the petals off. And they're great in salad. Um, they're great in a salad. They're nice and peppery tasting and very pretty also. Um, next is the pansy. This is a pansy. And these are really, I like using pansies in baking. Um, what you can do with a pansy is you can take some egg white, mix it up a little bit, take a little paintbrush and paint the egg whites on the surface of the pansies and then dredge it in a super fine sugar and you have a candied pansy, which looks beautiful on cakes or cupcakes. And you could also use um, the, little, the little violas. This is a little viola, it's pretty little. Um, they're also very sweet and nice uh, sugared. Um, the last one I'd like to talk about is lavender. La I have a lavender here. My lavender really isn't blooming right now, so I had to take a really little piece of it but it still smells wonderful. I like to dry lavender. I don't eat it raw. I dry it and I keep the seeds, the flower heads. So I pick all the flower heads off like this. So I have all these little tiny flower heads and then I dry them and then I put them in a plastic bag and I use them in baking. I make a really nice lavender shortbread cookie. Very good. It's great in baking. Um, can't go wrong. Another, you know, another thing you could do, a gift item is um, you could take, you know, um, rosemary and uh, sage and um, thyme and oregano and dry them and then mix them together and make it like an Italian seasoning and give it as gifts to your friends. Um, there's lots of things you can do with herbs. That's why I like them so much. They're so versatile and um, really fun to grow and to uh, work with. Um, I, that's about it for the edible flowers. Um, so is there any other questions? Um, there's one last question here from Lucille. Mm -hmm. What time of year is the best time to gather bay leaves? To gather bay leaves. Um, hmm. Well, I would definitely not do it in the winter because everything kind of gets, everything turns dormant in the winter. That means that the plant is not producing what it normally, the sugars that it normally produces or the oils that it normally produces. I think spring would be a great time when it's uh, probably late spring, once it's, once the plants have, you know, come out of shock and they're starting to, um, um, get into the season. Late spring, I would say. Well, thank you very much, Cindy. This has been very, very much fun to listen to you talk about your favorite things and herbs um, and how to plant them. I'd just like to remind everyone that you will be down at the Pocket Garden at, behind the San Carlos Library Tuesday mornings if anyone wants to come by and chat about herbs. Yep. Thank, you. Sure thank you very much. Thank you.